long dark night my soul it wanders can't see the light that moves me God is Something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. Something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been I know we're supposed to start at 5. However, uh, Moses isn't here yet, <clears throat> and Carla's not here yet with the girls. Um, so, And she's bringing Moses, and so we're going to wait a few minutes here. Um, she called Susie and said that she's about 15 minutes away. She had to turn around. Actually, she forgot Moses. Um, <laughs> so she had to turn around and go back and get him. Um, so we're going to... Hold off here for a few minutes if you want to get up, stretch your legs, whatever um, you want to do during the time frame. And once um, they arrive, then we'll get started. Does that sound okay to everybody? Sorry for the inconvenience or for the delay, but um, kind of hard to start if he's not here. So, <laughs> alrighty, okay. So, little bit enjoy. deeper than I've ever been. God is calling me, and I'm grateful like I've never been
Something's calling me Something's calling me Something's calling me A little bit deeper than I've ever been My naked legs left dangling I can feel my heart begin to pound And everybody said Something's calling me A little bit deeper than I've ever been before Something's calling me That moves me God is everything And everywhere That I belong Spirit gently wakes me From my sleep Something's calling me A little bit deeper Than I've ever been Something's calling me a little bit deeper than I've ever been before. Oh Lord, oh Lord, take me deeper than I've ever been before. Oh Lord.
You made it. <laughs> so good evening. My name is Jeffrey Kalo Harayan, <clears throat> and I'm part of the ecclesiastical team here at Center for Spiritual Living Greater Las Vegas. The center is Moses' spiritual home, and it is an honor to be here with all of you to celebrate one year, his one-year anniversary, in remembrance of our beloved Moses. <clears throat> Moses, Freddie, whatever name he goes by, Papa, Dad, Tio. He's right here with us always, present in our hearts, present in our lives. Even though he's made his transition from this earthly plane into a new expression of love and light. So much has happened in this past year. So today we gather to remember him and the impact that he had on our lives and continues to have for each of us. We also gather here today to acknowledge and share our joys and our sorrows of the past year. Our joys and sorrows are reflections of our deep and abiding love. When we share our joys, they're multiplied. And when we share our sorrows, they're lightened. Together, we move forward in the journey of our divine unfoldment, and Moses helps light the way. So this first candle we light represents our grief. The pain of losing you is intense, and it reminds us of our depth of our love for you. The second candle represents our courage, our courage to confront our sorrow, to comfort one another, and to change our lives. The third candle we light in your memory for the times we laughed, the times we cried, the times we were angry with each other, the silly things you did, and the caring and the joy that you gave us. And the fourth candle we light for our love. We light this candle that your light will always shine as we think of you each day and share your memory with our family and friends. We cherish our special place in our hearts that you will always be reserved for you. We thank you for the gift that your life has brought to each of us. We love you and we remember you. I was here from the moment of the beginning, and here I am still, and I shall remain here until the end of the world. I have passed a mountain peak, and my soul is soaring in the firmament of complete and unbound freedom. The voices of the throngs are reduced to the silence, and I can hear nothing but the music of eternity, in exact harmony with the Spirit's desires. I am cloaked in full whiteness. I am in comfort. I am in peace. And in this moment, we give thanks. We give thanks for the abundance that shows up in our lives. We give thanks for the abundance that is evident on this dinner table. And we are in joy for the gathering of all our family members.
present and unpresent. The ones we see here today and the ones who are present who we cannot see. What a beautiful moment this is to love, to be, to be who we really are. To love simply for the fact of loving, not to love of wanting or getting, but an unconditional love. What a beautiful moment this is. To be here now, in this moment, in this perfect moment, in joy, in peace, in love. I love you all. And I simply let it be. And so it is. I felt like I was standing still Caught between what I think and what I feel But now the only thing that my soul
So even though Moses is not physically present, he's been communicating with many of us throughout the past year. He's left us signs and we've heard his voice. We felt his presence. And on Wednesday, <clears throat> I was in the foyer there and I found in the lost and found these sunglasses. And if you notice, they're very similar to the ones that a pair that Moses used to have. And when I saw them, I knew that it was a sign from him that he was really happy that all of us are here, gathered here together to share with each other and to share our love with each other. And it's really hard to see anything with these on, so I'm going to go ahead and take them off. Um, <clears throat> and to share our love for each other. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to invite his family to the platform to share from their hearts. This is something that they had asked um, for the opportunity to do and to share what's been going on for this year, during this year, um, how he's been in communication, because he definitely is, he definitely has been, as I'll talk to you a little bit more um, about in a few minutes. So, anybody from his family would like to come up, and then here's the microphone for you. Carla, would you like to come forward? Um, first, I want to start by apologizing for being late. Um, it was my fault. Um, my strong girl. He's communicated a lot with us, and um, he's made me realize that there is life after death. There is something else. Um, he. Uh, as a matter of fact, today, he communicated with us this morning. We were having breakfast, and um, the whole power in the house went off. And right away, Carly said, it's Daddy. And uh, sure enough, the lights came back on. And that's all we can think of, that it was him. Um, he woke me up at 2.55 this morning. And um, I have his ashes on the side of my bed. And he made sure, he made sure that I, um, that I knew he was there. It took me a while to go back to sleep. Even though I, I, I wouldn't want to feel it this way, God knows why he does things for us. Um, you want to share something? Yes, that... One day on a Wednesday, I think, um, I was playing my video game, and so I was supposed to walk around and said it was going to take pictures of people. Then as I took a picture at the wall, there was a face of my dad right on the camera. I felt really happy that he was there. He's, he's done a lot of things. He's done a lot of things, and makes us more of a believer. And um, with that, I've asked him for guidance, guidance for, for our family. 
I do want to thank everybody for being here. And again, I apologize for being late. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to share something? <clears throat> How the year's been? A joyful memory? I'll bring it to you. Wow. <laughs> you want to get up there? All right. Hey. Good on you, boy. If I cry, forgive me. <laughs> You know, one thing I want to share is uh, I remember the time my uncle uh, stood up here and he shared his, uh, his poem. And uh, I remember he used to express to me how excited and uh, even how afraid he was. <sighs> Just how afraid he was to uh, step up in front of his peers and the people that he loves and uh, just express himself. But um, he has so much passion for expression and uh, just the truth and the love that he had in his heart to speak out. And it, it amazed me how he was so willing to conquer his fears. And uh, every time I get that opportunity to get up and do that, I think of him. He gives me a lot of strength. And without him, I couldn't even stand up here. And I know I'm going to cry for the moment. I even think of standing up. But you know what? Um, for him, I'll do it. Because he showed me the courage to be able to stand up and speak up and say what's in your heart. Say what's in your mind. It's one of the biggest tools that we have is expression and love. And we have to learn to use it. And we can't be afraid. And that's one thing that he taught me is to never be afraid. <sighs> to do what feels right and to do what feels right inside. And uh, I thank him because he's taught me so, so much. And he's also been there for me. Um, you know what, I asked for him to, to show up in dreams and he, and he never did. <laughs> he really never did. But um, you know what, one really cool thing that uh, happened for me was he actually, um, he came in and he communicated and uh, for my birthday, September 16, I truly believe that my Uncle Freddie was the first person to tell me happy birthday. And um, I didn't feel his presence at home or by myself. I actually felt it with a, a good group of friends while we were just hanging out. And um, you know what, it was a very magical thing. Um, sometimes I use the word crazy, but you know what, it's not crazy because uh, the feeling inside when something like that happens is truly, magical and real, and it makes you open your eyes and your heart to, to way more. Um, I want to say thank you to the center for always being there for day one, um, for the whole family, not only for my Uncle Freddie. You guys have always been there and always opened the door for us to do things like this, and um, it truly means so much. And uh, I'm sorry I don't come more. <laughs> Honestly, it's really hard when I walk in those doors because I see myself standing next to my uncle and my mom. And if I'm here by myself, sometimes it's, that's all I picture. <sighs> but I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart because uh, sometimes we have friends and we have family and then there's people that step in from outside of a circle that really show you true love. And that's something very rare and something new to me. And you guys opened my heart to a, to a new place, just like you did to my Uncle Freddie. So we thank you, my family and my Uncle Freddie. We thank you because I know he's here watching and seeing all of this that you guys have done for us. So thank you. Anybody else who would care to share? I can definitely bring the microphone to you if you'd rather. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you did a great job, Alex. Jamie? I just wanted to say um, that this is such an awesome demonstration of the power that this man, Moses, touched so many lives and continues to touch so many lives. Um, he brought, as you all know, so much joy and we had so much foresight that we envisioned with him. But it, um, it has delivered a different journey. Um, he was to be in practitioner class with a couple of us carrying on the word and the truth and what he truly believed in his heart. And him being transitioned, in our opinion, so quickly and painfully for us, we know that if we just keep, if we just keep keeping on, if you will, with his thoughts and his truth and his smile and his laughter that gifted all of us while he was here. Um, I think that, too, is something Moses would really, really embrace for as long as we keep that going for him and for ourselves. Jamie? Yes, I, I just want to um, to say how much of an inspiration Moses uh, was in his life and has been since and the way <coughs> he interacted with people and his poetry and so on. I've, I've been aspiring to write for a long, long time. Um, I do very well at writing technical things, but ex expressing things um, from my heart has been difficult, but this is certainly, um, his life is certainly an inspiration for me to begin doing that, and, um, and uh, we loved him. My name is uh, Scott Schmidt, and uh, Moses was my spiritual brother. He was my fellow classmate. Uh, Moses and I were, uh, there were three of us that were quite regulars in attending classes here at the Center for Spiritual Living. It was Drew McCullough, myself, and Moses. And uh, Jeff at the time was uh, a practitioner leading the class. Uh, Moses and I first, along with two other classmates over there, we first journeyed through uh, uh, Beyond Limits and then treatment and meditation. And um, it was that time when I started understanding uh, a, d a deeper understanding of spirit and spirituality and peace. And there was an exercise that I so fondly remember every time where Moses and I were pitted against each other and we were fighting over taking something away from us, and that was faith. And Moses fought me tooth and nail, you can't have it, you can't have it. But I want it, it's mine, you can't have it, you can't have it. And it was that conviction and that fire and that passion that Moses, even though we were, you know, reenacting a scene, but it was that passion that, that I tapped into in him that was so authentic and pure. Um, when Moses got sick, you know, like it affected every one of us in a different way. Um, shock, of course, came first. You know, how can this vibrant young being who has so much 
ahead of him get stricken with this illness. Uh, at the time, I went on to become a Reiki practitioner, and I was away with studies. I had quit my corporate America job and devoted the rest of my life to helping and healing others. And I remember I came over to the house, and uh, I did Reiki with Moses, and, and it was such a powerful connection between the two of us that he honored me by allowing me to do that. And uh, I believe he said he thought I gave him a drug or something because he slept so well. <laughs> and I said, no, it's just another form of spiritual love, brother. And um, he continues to be my inspiration. Um, whenever I doubt myself or get into um, a space where maybe I should be something else, I remember Moses and how he lived his truth with such passion, such conviction, such compassion. So I honor my brother this evening, and um, as I honor him every day, and I know he is with us, he's with us, he's here. <laughs> uh, when I hear that song, I'm reminded of Moses. And... Uh, I'm so grateful to have known his spirit and soul. May he continue to inspire each one of you to live your best version, to move past the fear, the pain, the self-doubt, because he was none of those. Live your best version. Good evening. My name is Fabulous Darley. Uh, I'm sorry for the rest of the brother-in-laws. I was Moses' favorite brother-in-law. <laughs> sorry, Danny. Sorry, Danny. Uh, Moses, uh, I know Moses since he was about 14 or 15 years old. Daddy's sister. He used to open the window sometime for me to get into the house. I could tell you now because I already married your daughter. Uh, I lived with his sister and Moses went on to live with us and Moses was really quiet. I'm super quiet guy. I, I started my business in 2002 and the only guy that really, 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 really believed in me was Moses. Everybody thought I was crazy. Used to be involved in this company called Prepare Legal. We drive Tuesdays and Thursdays from Mission Hills to Santa Ana. And I've been a leader in the industry of multi-level marketing. I had a problem reading and trying to comprehend things that I read. Not that I was dumb, just that my mind would wander and but I never could tell the people that I, that I can read. So those of you that know Moses, this guy read everything, doesn't he? So I say, I'll buy the book, he read the book, and then I tell Moses, what did you know about the book? So he tells me everything about the book, and I look like if I knew the book, you know? But that's what leaders do. They they look for a way to do things like that. And so after that, uh, he ran with me. He worked with me. Uh, he, he, he doesn't just say anything he wanted to say to me. He just told me how he felt. Uh, me and my wife are, are building a uh, resort. Matter of fact, before that, I want you to know that the day that Moses met Carla, I was there. Right, Carla? And so... I'm cool with you, too. Uh, the other thing is that uh, me and my wife are building a resort, an eco-friendly resort in the Dominican Republic. And Moses always talked about the hummingbird. So as me and my wife eat breakfast every day, 
it's crazy because, you know, hummingbirds, they suck on flowers, don't they? But Moses come and zzz, I'm like, what the hell? And he goes to a rock, to a stone on the wall, and he's there. It's like, okay, we know you're there. But I never seen a hummingbird suck on the wall, and he's there. And me and his sister are like, okay, he's there. Afterwards, we bought a camera, camera set for uh, the resort. And we have the camera there, and he comes in. I'm not there. He comes in, and he gets into the camera, in the camera, like, hello, I'm here. I say, okay, we know you're here. So I just want you to know I want to thank everybody for, uh, for being here tonight. I'm talking on behalf of my family. Moses was a great brother-in-law to me. He still will be. And I know he's with us because he, he makes it seem that all the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to bless my, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law. And, you know, sometimes we, we say why things happen. You know what I'm saying? And I know some of us are doing saying why Moses? But we got to think why not Moses? Why not Moses? Because, you know, he's doing his thing over there for all of us. He's protecting us. He's doing what he's supposed to do. See you guys, and God bless. So we'll have much more time as we go across after service here, after service ends. Um, we're going to go across and have food together. We're going to have pupusas and other goodies. And the pupusas are being made, handmade, fresh. I was like, wow, this is awesome. So... Um, you know, it's said in Centers for Spiritual Living, where two or more are gathered, there must be food. And so we will be having food afterward. Moses' ministry was huge. As I was sitting with him one day, I said, you know, your ministry, what you've been called to, is huge. And what we've witnessed here tonight so far is just a very small piece of the lives and the countless lives that he has touched already and that he will continue to touch. A year ago, his, Freddie's niece, uh, Carol, created a video for us <clears throat> in memory of her uncle. And so we'd like to go ahead and look at that again, but this time with fresh eyes. This time with hearts that have been moved and lives that have been changed in the past year. And once again, see this video. And remember, and honor, and love, and cherish our beloved Freddie. As the storm rolls in, the sun will shine again. As the wind will carry it all away. So breathe where your breath is the wind of your soul. One, two, three. I don't condemn, I don't convert. This is calling have you heard bring all the lovers to the fold no one is gonna lose their soul all my days I've been searching to find out what this life is worth I've looked Through time I've searched Love is my religion Love is my religion Carly, you are so beautiful Carly, you are so beautiful 
spiritual center here in Las Vegas and uh, I was able to lead a it was actually my turn to lead a meditation today at the at the uh, meditation is more than you think class it went very well it um, I, I wasn't I wasn't nervous or uh, I didn't feel any fear or anything like that and uh, it, which is uh, much better than than I've done in the past. From the moment uh, I got up on that stage forward, I think everything's just been in flow for me, and um, I've been able to release uh, a lot of that anxiety and, and fear. So, um, yeah, obviously it's a it's a meditation class. So I, I feel really feel really at peace right now. I feel really grateful for my life uh, and everything that's going on in it right now. Uh, all the things, everything, everything. I'm grateful for everything right now. Um, I hope uh, I hope everything's going well for you. Always remember to go to go within. Always remember to 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 be in the silence for at least. You know, five minutes minimum, if you can. Uh, stop all the stop all the activity, 
and close your eyes and be in the silence. Uh, it will help uh, get you centered and will help with uh, the rest of the activity that's uh, coming after that. So, all right, that's all I have to say now. And I uh, hope you guys uh, have a great uh, day or rest of the week, depending on when you're watching this. Thanks a lot. Bye. is our breath, your light is our light.
So as has been talked about this evening so far, and as you've seen clearly in the video, <clears throat> Moses was always very creative in his self-expression. He sang, he danced, he painted, he drew, and he wrote poetry and prose. And he wrote this. It's called Look Up, Look Higher, Look Deeper. Justin and Dar Justin Vogel, our music director here, and Darren Motamity put it to music, and Justin performed it last year. But we wanted to share the text with you this time. This is what Moses was letting me know was going to happen. So here it goes. Look up, look higher, look deeper. When you are done with the pain, you can't take it anymore. Look up, look higher, look deeper. When you know it's the end and pain is your only friend, look up, look higher, look deeper. One more try, one more day, one more move to a better day. Close your eyes one more time. Say the words and you will fly. When frustration sets in and you can't see the end, look up, look higher, look deeper. When you want to run and shout, but you know you just can't reach out, look up, look higher, look deeper. One more try, one more day, one more move to a better day. Close your eyes one more time. Say the words, and you'll fly. I'm no longer in pain. I'm whole again. I'm up, I'm higher, I'm deeper. I know who I am and I cannot pretend. I'm up, I'm higher, and I'm deeper. I am love, I am truth. I am up, I am higher, I am deeper. No more pain, I'm whole once again. I'm up, I'm higher, I'm deeper. Join me. I am up. I am higher. I am deeper. Again. I am up. I am higher. I am deeper. One more time. I am up. I am higher. I am deeper. So as I was preparing for this remembrance, and I was sitting in contemplation, and few things were coming to me, Last night, I finally said, okay, what do you want me to say? I asked him. I reached out. I was like, Moses, you know, it's tomorrow. <laughs> what do you want me to say? What do you want me to share with everybody? And he said, <clears throat> I asked him about the poem. And he said, I wrote those words when I was experiencing all that pain when I was lost in that gray space, when I had no way out and I was so incredibly lost, that desperation and that depression was so heavy and I didn't know what to do. It shook my faith. But I just kept saying my affirmations and I kept listening to my music that inspired me. I kept praying and I kept trying to meditate. I just kept on. And I got through that gray, bland, lifeless time. I came out on the other side, renewed and restored by the faith that I thought was gone. I knew the road ahead would be tough, that it wouldn't be easy. But I surrendered myself to God. Something was calling me deeper into the depths of consciousness. And it was calling me higher, it was lifting me up, and it was raising me. Remember me joking with you that day at the hospital when I said that I couldn't wait to see the view from the 12th floor, but Summerlin Hospital only has six floors? Well, let me tell you, the view from up here is amazing. That time when everything was gray and bland and dull, there was no sensation, just pain. No taste, no color, no smell. That was suffering. 
that was worse than death itself. But that gray, you've got to lean into it. The only way out of the gray is through. Accept the gray, but continue doing the work. The work is the lifeline of love that pulls you through the gray, that guides you. And don't worry, I've got you. There's only one life. This life is God, this life is perfect, this life is my life now. It's true, you know. The truth is that we really are God or love intelligence in human form. And that the divine part of us is eternal and never separate from God. We are so much bigger than we imagine ourselves to be. The truth is, I'm here with you, I love you, and I haven't left you. I see you. There is so much love here, more than you could possibly imagine right now. But the gray is temporary. And Alex, there's no Rachel's Kitchen here. So go get one. And Carla, there is so much to life. It is beautiful and is it amazing. Live, mi amor. Live. So Moses taught us to look up and surrender to grace. He taught us to look higher and see that everything is conspiring for our highest good and the evolution of our soul. He taught us to look deeper into ourselves and shine the light into the shadows, into that gray space. He taught us to look deeper into ourselves and find the presence of God within. And he taught us not to take ourselves so seriously, to laugh, to have a good time, and yes, to be goofy. Just this morning, he must have been busy this morning, Carla, because he also woke up Doris at, Doris at 3 o'clock, and then subsequently she, through him, woke me up at 5.30. So this morning, in his own funny way, he contacted Doris and asked if we would show a video that he had. It was a jib-jab video of um, him doing Gangnam Style. And he really wanted to have it here today. And so Doris sent me a message on Facebook and said, and I said, at least the first link doesn't work. So, you know, I wanted her to let her know, so she sent it to me again, and I got to watch it. But unfortunately, the link still doesn't work for us to be able to show it. But in that barely half-awake state, I was like, really, brother? You have to do this now? I haven't even had my first cup of coffee yet. And he just laughed, that mischievous little laugh that he sometimes had. And so I gave him my famous eye roll, and I said, okay, I'll see what we can do. It's a beautiful man, an incredible spirit. And his ministry, his life lives on in each one present here. And what an honor and a joy it is to continue to know this man, to continue to get to know him, to have him walk beside us, guiding us, leading us, sometimes into temptation, but always delivering us from evil. And so <clears throat> many cultures and faith traditions use incense to honor their loved ones and carry messages on the smoke to those that have pierced the veil into another dimension. And these rituals often are a healing time for those who remain behind to continue their journey in this realm. So if it's comfortable for you to do so, I invite you to close your eyes and go within. <clears throat> Find yourself comfortable in your chair and take a few deep breaths and feel the breath of God breathing you. Allow the image of Moses or Freddie to sit in front of you, smiling his charismatic smile. Look into his eyes 
and feel his loving presence. Silently share with him anything you wish him to know. Perhaps you're offering him an apology. Perhaps you're offering him your forgiveness. Perhaps you're telling him how much you love him. Perhaps you're expressing gratitude for him and his presence in your life. Perhaps you're saying goodbye for now. Just allow the words of your heart to flow to him silently. now carrying the words that are in your heart, I invite you to come forward and take a stick of incense, there's one on either corner here, and light it, placing it here in the sand, keeping in mind sending that message to Moses, to Freddie, that message of the heart. So I invite you forward. Let me walk to the banks of the river of love Where the current runs deep and baptized in the one where there's no separation and the light is all we see. Honoring all our differences and love will set us free. Whoa, 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 whoa Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Yeah, Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. I said, oh, you rock my soul. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, you rock my soul. I see the blessings of the past. It's time to requalify. Let's not forget, but learn to forgive. God knows we got to try. It's my responsibility to heal the wounds in me. Compassion, faith, and hope, and love, and truth will set us free. Oh, oh, oh Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. No, oh, Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. I said, oh, you rock my soul. I said, oh, you rock my soul. One more time, I said, Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. I said, oh, you rock my soul. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, you rock my soul. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, you rock my soul. My brother, 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 my
brother, my sister, my brother, my friend, my brother, my sister, my mother, my friend, my brother, my sister, my mother, my friend, my brother, my sister, my mother, my brother, oh Lord, yeah. There's a healing going on. Come on, y'all. There's a healing going on. There's a healing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a healing going on. Can you feel it? Yeah. There's a healing going on. Sing some healing for me, Mr. Rob. some healing. Jesse, this one's for you. So I invite us to come together in consciousness. In conscious union with Mo Moses Freddy Soriano. Through the power of prayer. And so I recognize right here and right now that truly there is only one life one infinite, eternal being, one power, one presence, one love. And in the beginning, this one created absolutely everything from itself, through itself, as itself. In the beginning, God, nothing else. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it continues to be so here and now today. For God is the source and supply of all. Like the infinite ocean, forever giving of itself, forever creating from itself individualized waves. So too is the nature of God and humans, God and all of creation. Each is a wave 
formed from that infinite substance, an individualized expression of love, of light, of wholeness, of the power and the presence. And so each caresses, it, caresses the shore for a short time, having an impact on the shoreline, fulfilling its purpose. Each wave does so beautifully, magnificently, and perfectly in the divine order of the universe. And so I know that I am such a wave. I am called here, now, in this time, in this place, to be a blessing upon the world. I am called here so that spirit may know itself more fully, more completely, and express itself and do its work through and as me. And I know that this is true of everyone, everyone present, everyone who ever hears these words, everyone who has ever lived, everyone who will yet live. Each is a divine emanation and impartation of spirit. Each is a divine manifestation of spirit brought forth to do the work of the one. And I recognize that it is not I, the little I, the little self that does the work. But it is the spirit within. For I recognize that the highest most God and the innermost God are one and the same. And so I simply open out a way for the imprisoned splendor to emerge. I open out a way for love. I open out a way for joy. I open out a way for peace to be present right where I am. For my consciousness is aligned with the one consciousness. And everything flows forth from that. And so as I recognize this here and now about me, I also know it for and about Moses Freddy Soriano. Though his wave has receded back into the ocean from which it came, it was never separate from the ocean to begin with. It merely showed up in form for us to admire, admire the beauty and splash in the fun and the joy of it. And it is returned to the ocean from which it came. Still one, still moving, still being, though I can't see it any longer. Knowing that Moses continues to yet another shore, another dimension of unfoldment, where once again, he touches lives, makes a difference, as he's done so in my life. And I know that he continues to do so. I hear him. When I go within, and I hear that still, small voice that speaks, I know that it's God. And I know that it is Moses sometimes. That it is God speaking to me as Moses. Because it's what I'm receptive to, it's what I can hear. With the beauty and the power of his words, and yes, with his absolute funny humor. Teasing me, making me laugh, making me smile and occasionally bringing a tear to my eye. And so I give thanks for the life that is Moses. I give thanks for his presence and his power, my God. I give thanks for the joy and for his family, for his friends, for all the lives he has touched and for all the lives he continues to touch. And I release this word into the law, knowing absolutely I solamente una vida. 
Esta vida es la vida de Dios. Esta vida es perfecta. Y esta vida es mi vida ahora. Y así es. Amén. was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand Join us in the great room for pupusas and all kinds of yummy goodies.